So in this video, we are going to talk about how to take a history from a Eurogyne case uh, because it, it has to cover something uh, which is extra in relation to Eurogynecology module um, to be uh, fulfilling everything in the history. So the first item in the history is a personal history. We need to know how old is the patient because usually we see a uh, urogyne problem in uh, postmenopausal ladies. Uh, however, in very rare cases, we can see in the childbearing period. Okay, so we need to go introduce yourself by name and rule and then confirm patient name and age. Um, then we go to uh, the history of present illness. Okay. So history of present Ill illness, what is the complaint the patient comes with? So you, you, sometimes the patient may come uh, because just lump coming from down blue. Uh, maybe the patient coming uh, because of urinary incontinence uh, or any urinary symptoms rather than incontinence like frequency, nocturia, uh, urgency, okay? Um, recurrent urinary tract infection, um, inability to uh, empty her bladder completely. So whatever the complaint uh, she is coming with, we need to take some details about it. Like since how long you have been suffering from this problem? And uh, the most important question here, how this problem is affecting your life socially, okay? or quality of life um, and whether anything increases or decreases like you know um, if the patient is having uh, like frequency or nocturia we need to ask about her drinking habits drinking not necessarily to be alcohol we need to ask about drinking habits in terms of caffeinated drinks uh, and all fluids in general and how she managed like you know if she drinks lots in the evening rather than in the morning or uh, you know the these these kind of stuff can increase her nocturia in the night okay so if she has like you know uh, stress incontinence when she cough strain laugh sneeze all these can cause her symptoms to increase okay um so do you know the difference between urge incontinence and the stress incontinence so this, the urge incontinence that means the patient uh, has have some problems in the muscle uh, or dysfunction in the muscle uh, of the bladder which calls the distrusor muscle uh, the detrusor muscle is overactive. That means when the bladder starts to fill, uh, this detrusor muscle should relax until the bladder is completely full. But in the, in, in the situation when we have a detrusor overactivity or um, uh, overactive bladder, this detrusor muscle becomes irritated early. So once the bladder starts to fill this detrusor muscle will start to contract early and uh, giving the patient the desire to go to the toilet soon so the patient has to rush to the toilet and sometimes if she couldn't reach on time she may leak because this detrusor muscle will contract strongly and push the urine out involuntary and that's called urge incontinence and the rush to the toilet is called urgency, okay? Um, also, the detrusor overactivity can cause frequency because the patient will feel that she needs to go to the toilet more often than usual uh, because, you know, the bladder can't be fully uh, filled. Uh, once starting filling, it will just go and evacuate. So that's that's how the detrusor overactivity acts. What about stress incontinence? Stress incontinence 
the bladder muscle doesn't have any dysfunction. The bladder is working well. The problem here is in the sphincter of the urethra. Usually, during the filling phase of the bladder, the sphincter has to close firmly to prevent this urine from leaking. However, in stress incontinence, there is a weakness of this sphincter, okay? And that's why when the bladder starts to fill, if I increase the pressure on top of the bladder by coughing, sneezing, laughing, or anything that can increase the intra-abdominal pressure, it will press on the bladder. And then because the sphincter is very weak, it will leak some urine with cough, sneeze, laugh, or anything like that. So that's how we know what is what is the type of incontinence the patient is presenting. So if we need to ask her, we need to ask about all of these symptoms, okay? So how to ask about history of present illness in any uh, urogyne cases? We have, you know, three compartment. If you remember the perineal area, we have three compartments. We have the urology or what we call the urethra or uh, urethral department. We have the vaginal department and we have the rectal department. There are three, three uh, departments or compartments, okay? So we'll start to ask about the, the urinary compartment. So I need to ask about incontinence. Do you uh, leak? at any time. We need to ask about frequency, how to ask about frequency. Do you need to go to the toilet more often than usual? We need to ask about urgency. Do you think that you need to rush to the toilet? We need to ask about nocturia. Do you, how many times do you go during the night time? What is the normal? So the normal between one to two like times. If more than two, she has definitely nocturia, okay? Usually, um, in the normal person, uh, we don't go to the toilet during the night time. Sometimes we may go once, but twice can be, but if more than two, that's totally uh, diagnosed with nocturia. Um, don't forget to ask any pain with passing urine <clears throat> to exclude uh, painful bladder syndrome. Um, also, we need to ask about symptoms of UTI, like do you have any burning or stinging uh, sensation when you pass urine? Do you have any uh, kind of lying pain, uh, which is uh, associated sometimes with fever? Um, what about your, uh, while you are you passing, passing urine, uh, is it dribbling? Okay. So these are uh, the urinary symptoms. We need to ask about everything in relation to the urine. So despite, even if the patient coming with prolapse, we need to ask these questions. So the three compartments question is mandatory for every case in urogyne, okay? So this is the urinary compartment question. Coming to the vaginal compartment question, we need to ask about any problems in the in the intercourse, any dyspareunia, like any difficulty or pain during sex. Are you sexually active? Before you ask her any problem during sex, confirm she is sexually active. Why is this important? Uh, first of all, we need to know if the patient uh, is having like prolapse or anything like that. Sometimes it may affect her sexual life, okay? And also, if we are going to give her pessary, um, there are types of pessaries that can't be given during uh, with a sexually active woman. And also, if we are going to do surgery for her, so if she's sexually active and we are going to do sacrospinous fixation, for example, that, that can cause very, uh, uh, like, you know, tight vagina and increase this parole. So that's why we need to ask about if she's sexually active or no. Uh, then if, if yes, we need to ask about any pain or any problem during intercourse. 
Um, what about lump? Do you, do you feel that there is any lump coming from down below? Uh, any discharge, any bleeding, anything like that, okay? And coming to the rectal uh, compartment, we have uh, to ask about uh, any bowel symptoms, any problems at all in, in the bowel. Do you have a good control uh, to wind, a good control to stool? Do you feel any pressure symptoms? Because sometimes dragging effect, you know, can cause uh, pressure symptoms. Some of the patient may tell you, if I need to evacuate my bladder or my bowel, I need to introduce my finger inside the vagina and push it. Okay, so this is a, a very common, um, like, you know, statement from the patients with prolapse. Um, so that's how to uh, ask about the, the history of present illness. Uh, we need also to ask about whether she tried any treatment before, because like some patient may come to you after completing her physiotherapy and she and it didn't work, or after taking some medication for incontinence and it didn't work. So we need to know well, because we have a stepwise uh, treatment manner, we need to know where we are. So have you tried any treatment before for the same condition? Okay. Um, going down, we need to know about her obstetric history. It's very important here because usually the patient who got urogynecologic problem is having a weak perineal muscle. And why she's having a weak perineal muscle? First of all, lack of estrogen because she's postmenopausal. But if she's perimenopausal or perimenopausal, like in a child bearing period, what can cause that? It can be due to difficult deliveries or large babies or uh, like, you know, frequent precipitate labor, instrumental deliveries like that. So we need to ask uh, how many uh, pregnancies uh, do you have? Sometimes you may find this question is very difficult in, in a lady like 81 year or something like that. Uh, but you can ask nicely, um, do you have uh, like, you know, uh, I, I like you know I want to ask you some questions from uh, your background history uh, have have you ever been pregnant before like like that okay uh, it's a silly question in a post uh, menopausal old lady however it's very important okay and what was the outcome um, like vaginal deliveries and uh, what about, uh, do you remember it was, uh, there was any difficulty during your delivery, uh, any use of instruments, any uh, repair or stitches from down below? Uh, was it uh, really difficult and big babies or no, like that, okay? Um, and what about gynae history? Gynecologic history, first of all, we need to know about when was her last menstrual period. Is it premenopausal or postmenopausal patient? And if she is postmenopausal, whether she is getting any menopausal symptoms, if she is recently postmenopausal, like if she's if she told that I'm postmenopausal, we need to ask since how long, and whether she has any uh, symptoms like hot flushes, night sweating, uh, and also whether she's taking uh, any HRT at the moment or no, because some patient um, may need uh, estrogen cream just to uh, for 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 uh, vaginal dryness or anything like that. Okay, so we need to know whether she's on any HRT or no. We need to ask also about her cervical screening. Uh, because it can, uh, the cervical screening program is uh, going till the age of 65 years. So what about your smear history? Are you up to date with your smears? Is everything is all right? Like that, okay? 
Um, the other gynae history uh, may be not really relevant in case of postmenopausal, like sexual uh, infection or sexually transmitted infection, um, like. Uh, We, 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 we need to know about her, uh, say, like, you know, if, she, if she's sexually active, any problems with the intercourse, that's fine. However, uh, that's, that's all we need to know from the gynae history. So whether she, she's sexually active, when was her last menstrual period, whether she's on HRT, whether she's having any symptoms of uh, postmenopausal, like hot flushes or night sweating. And what about her smears? Okay. Uh, then the medical history. So why we need to know about medical history? Usually, uh, if the patient is diabetic or hypertensive, and this is common in postmenopausal ladies. So if she is diabetic, uh, the diabetes itself, if it is not controlled, uh, can cause polyuria. So we need to know whether she, uh, if she is diabetic, uh, what what medication she is on, and whether she is monitoring her blood sugar well and uh, seeing her GP for that uh, reason, uh, like, you know, uh, properly and controlling her blood sugar well or no. Because if it is not controlled, we need to advise her or to write to, to the GP to uh, help her to control her, her blood sugar. Just to be clear, clear that uh, this problem is mainly, like if she's having just frequency and nocturia, we need to exclude the diabetic cause from that, okay? And if she's hypertensive, some hypertensive or most of the hypertensive patients are using diuretic therapy. So we really need to know whether her frequency is related to the diuresis from the medication or no. So we need to know if she's taking diuretic therapy, what time she's taking. Um, if she's taking it, uh, like, you know, some, some, some patient may take it in uh, early in the morning and some patient may take it just before sleep. Uh, and we need to know where, whether her symptoms is coming straight away after taking the tablet or is independent on the tablet. Okay. And if uh, she's experiencing, like, you know, uh, symptoms that may bother her, we need to uh, speak to her GP and modify her treatment and see whether it is causing or no. Uh, also, we need to know uh, about any chest problem, like if the patient's having asthma or if she's uh, having chronic obstructive lung condition or she has a chronic cough, uh, that's may, that may affect, uh, you know, uh, the recurrence of prolapse and incontinence because this will cause increase in the intra-abdominal pressure. If the patient is chronically coughing, um, even if you treat it, it will progress. If it, it will re it will cause recurrence of her condition as well. So we need to uh, ask if any problems in your chest, and we need to treat it. Okay. Um, also, if uh, we need to to know more about her uh, bowel problems because some patients may have chronic constipation and also uh, prolonged straining and bearing down all the time that also cause the pelvic muscle or the pelvic floor to be more weakened and also uh, causing more prolapse and more incontinence. So that is the medical history. We need to know about diabetes, hypertension, chest problems, and bowel problems. Um, coming to the surgical history, what surgery is important for us to know? Any surgery related to the urogyny, like, you know, patient coming uh, with a prolapse, but she had, like, you know, a hysterectomy before. So we may expect that maybe uh, either volt prolapse, it may be anterior vaginal wall or posterior vaginal wall prolapse. A patient coming with prolapse, but she had a repair of prolapse before. So we need to know what is the type of surgery caused, by, like uh, done for prolapse. Some some patient may have anterior vaginal wall repair, but she is coming today with rectocele. So, okay, and some patient may come 
with the same problem, like she has anterior vaginal wall repair and coming again with cystocele. So we need to know what surgery exactly she, she, she has done. And if there is any notes for her surgery, we need to review the surgical notes carefully. Okay. Um, what about the drug history and allergies? The drug history, as I told you, if she's taking uh, diuretic therapy, um, allergies uh, is very important because um, we are going to uh, give a medication at some point. And also there is very uh, important thing here. If the patient, uh, Urogyne, we need to ask about pacemaker if if her main problem is urge incontinence or overactive bladder. Uh, that's because if we are going to provide her with the uh, treatment with posterior tibial nerve stimulation, she uh, has to uh, not to have a pacemaker fitted or anything like that. Um, social history, as I told you, we need to ask about how this condition is affecting her social life. Uh, we need to ask about smoking because the smoking can cause chronic cough and chronic cough can increase the intra-abdominal pressure and, in, and this like you know can lead to increase our problem like indirectly. Uh, and if she's a smoker we need to advise her to either cut down or if she's able to stop that's that will be great. Also, we need to ask about alcohol. Why? Because alcohol is one of the di strong diuretics. So if she's uh, drinking uh, lots of alcohol, we need to uh, advise her also to cut down uh, uh, or stop because that may increase her frequency, increase uh, her, uh, like, you know, uh, urination symptoms or urinary symptoms. Um, the most important thing here, how she's getting support at home, because, you know, these kind of patients, uh, sometimes they may go into depression and mental health problems because of incontinence, because all the time they feel themselves smelly and people will know and people will, will, may feel and also they need to wear the beds all the time. So we need to uh, ask or screen about mental health problems as well okay um, that's all for the information gathering in urogyne i'll uh, make another video for the examination investigations and how to manage the cases of urogyne thank you